Hi, I'm Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina, and today I want to walk you through how we set the altar in our church. Now, every church is going to have a slightly different way of doing this, I'm sure, but hopefully this will kind of give a general idea of how things are done. There's not a lot of videos out there for how to do that from an Anglican perspective, and I wanted to make a video for that. I made one a while back, um, but we've changed the way that we do things a little bit here. We were using small communion cups at that time to pour from to pour wine into so that everyone could partake of the wine because we were not using the common cup at the time, and we've moved back to the common cup, and so I want to step back and kind of show how we do things here at Grace Anglican, and hopefully that will help you understand how you might help set the altar table or the um, communion table at your church. So if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you'll hit that thumbs up button, that like button to let the algorithms know that you enjoyed it. And also, if you might be so kind as to share this video on social media to let other people learn about this. And also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you are not already a subscriber. And that will help our channel continue growing as we move ever forward and continue to gain subscribers. We're slowly growing more and more and hope to continue to reach others and share what it is to be Anglican and how to walk in the Anglican way and how to be a Christian through the Anglican way. So the first things first, at our church, we rent space. So this is not our sanctuary. This is a room in another building that has been set up to be a chapel or sanctuary for us. And so we have our altar at the front where we um, look toward the lectern when it's normally up here. I set it to the side so that you can see the credence table. And we don't have a lot of storage space. So we keep everything here that you see sitting on this table underneath the altar. We have some boxes down here that we store things in. And so the first thing that you would do if you were setting our altar would be to bend down and pull out the boxes and set everything out on the altar that you're going to need. In a regular Anglican church or Lutheran church or Roman Catholic church, you have a room called the sacristy, sacrist, sacristy where you, these items would be kept, where you would set up your cruets like these with the wine and the water, and where you would wash everything out there. Um, we don't have that. We just have a simple kitchen um, because of the way this building is made. And so we keep these things after we clean them after communion under the table for safekeeping so that they can easily be pulled out. So you would pull out each of the things that are gonna be used, beginning with our candles. These are kept under the table. You just get them out and we have a box that have the hurricane globes in them and you would just set them up like this to prepare the table. You would also then get out the book stand that's sitting right here that I keep the prayer book on. So you just set this here and I adjust it as I need to when necessary. Uh, we have another box that contains the chalice veil and the pall that would be placed over the communion, over the chalice and the paten once everything is set on the table as it needs to be. So you would get that out along with some white linens, a couple of cloths, one to be used as a purificator and one to be used to um, dry my fingers after the ablutions when I set the table. So we continue now. We also have our chalice in one of these handy bags. So you just begin unwrapping everything and taking it off. Set the chalice right there. Here we have our serving plate for setting our cruets on and we just keep that over here on the credence table where all the elements will be placed um, prior to setting the table for communion. Our ciborium, so it kind of looks like the chalice, but it's wider and shorter. This is for keeping extra wafers in, so we will fill this with wafers as part of our setup for communion. And that again just sits over here on the credence table. In these small bags, we have the lid for the ciborium, as well as our paten. So all that is pulled out and we'll just set those underneath again. We have our white linens. One of these will be placed over the chalice. So we'll go ahead and do that. Place it over the chalice. This will be used as a purificator during communion especially with using the common cup. We have to wipe the cup after each person um, takes a drink from the common cup, and so that's what that is for. The patent then just sets on top of that. Along with everything else, you will take out the communion wafers. Here are our large communion wafers. These are the ones that I use to break during communion. So you would just simply take one of those and place that in the patent for me. 
And then we'll just put that back over here and set that off to the side. And then we have our regular communion wafers and we just take this container and just pour however many we need over into the ciborium. So we pour those in in preparation for communion and then place the lid over that to keep them covered up. And again, we just simply take this and set it to the side for right now. Now we've got the chalice, the purificator, the paten, and our communion wafer, our large communion wafer there. And then we'll set the pall, the pall on top of all of that. And then our, looking up terms, this is called the chalice veil. So it just covers everything up. And once everything is up here, like this, I've heard this referred to in some situations as the tabernacle. It's covering the, the items used for communion, the chalice and the paten, and leaving us preparing, and we leave it here in preparation for communion. We also have a small paten and a small chalice that we set up here with a gluten-free wafer on it that we would place on that paten for anyone who might need that. And so we'd also have the extra chalice to put wine in for the, any individuals that would be partaking of the gluten-free wafer so that they would be able to have wine that has no breadcrumbs or anything in it of their own because I do break the communion wafer over the wine so there's going to be crumbs in it and other people will be dipping their regular wafers in our primary cup. So we have a secondary chalice for anyone that needs a gluten-free chalice and gluten-free wafer. Now... As part of our setup, you have this setup now. You have wafers on the table. What about the wine? Now the wine is in a bottle underneath the table as well. You would just simply go back to the kitchen and there everyone's gonna have a different setup for how they do it at their church. It'll be a sacrist sacristy if you're in a proper church building. And there you would have the wine and you would just simply pour wine into the cruets that you need and then add water to one of the other cruets so you have water and wine for use during communion. I'm not going to go back to our kitchen and set all that up right now, but you would go back there and you'd find these cruets and one the cabinet's drying. And for us, you would fill up one of these. And then we have a spare one to also add some extra wine to just in case we need more wine during communion. And then add some water to this. And so these would just simply be placed over here on the tray with the spare wine being set just here to the side. And then we also have our ablution bowl for catching the water. So after I set the table, the acolyte then offers me the water and this bowl and will pour water over my fingers to clean them in preparation for communion. And that just simply also goes over here on the credence table. And so these are the main things, the main setup for communion here at Grace Anglican. This en enables me to be able to be ready when preparing for communion. All these elements, all these items are set up properly. The acolyte would come up after I uncover everything, would offer me the ciborium from which I draw the wafers that I need and place them on the paten, then would offer me the wine cruet where I would pour wine into the chalice, then offer me the water cruet where I would add a little bit of water to the chalice as well, and then I would turn and um, after recovering the chalice with the purificator, would then turn to that acolyte and the acolyte would wash my fingers with the water and then I would dry my fingers on the other white linen that is over there. So this has been a pretty quick video walking through how to set the table for communion. I hope this is helpful for you and that you find this interesting. Leave questions in the comment section below and let me know what you think and I hope this is helpful for you. So may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.